So in this video, we're going to look at how to analyze an official mock. If you've seen my earlier video in which I analyze a Sigma X mock, my objective in this video is going to be very, very similar where I want to tell you how you can get one to two points from each section of the Sigma X mock uh, of the official mock. I apologize. And uh, or in other words, how can you get the next 30 to 40 points in um, in, in your um, official mock with the next uh, uh, in your next attempt within with about 10 days of effort. So with that, let's get started. We're going to take a uh, a mock attempt where uh, where some, uh, our student has scored a 645, which is an approximately a 90th percentile or an 89th percentile to be precise. Now, um, here's a real balance score where you can see he has an 81 in DI or a 90th percentile here, um, or 82 in quant and, and an 82 in verbal. Now, um, why I like this score is because if your score is between a 595 and a, and a 695, most likely in one of the sections, uh, you're going to have a score which is very similar to, to the sectional score and the analysis is likely, uh, will likely apply to you. So with that, let's start with, with quant. Now, one of the first screens that you really see is this raw data screen. Um, it's really uh, very difficult to do anything in this screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to transpose this data into an Excel format. But even before we do that, there is some analysis that the GMAC provides, which is really, really helpful. We're going to look at that. Now, one thing that you clearly see is that this particular student scored a, if, uh, a 76 percentile in quant, as you can see over here. And, 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 and that 76 percentile is composed of a, a 78th percentile in algebra and a 63rd percentile in arithmetic. So clearly the students weaker in algebra than in arithmetic. So this is something which is absolutely clear. And the, and the second thing that, that you can see from this is that, uh, uh, that, that there are two areas which the student seems to have issues with. One is value order factors and the second is counting sets, series and probability and stats. So again, we're going to delve deeper to really see to what extent does a student have problems in these areas. Um, and then we also have um, a comparison between pure and real context and there's no real difference between them. And then the other piece is this timing pressure chart. And when you really see this timing pressure chart, what you see is the student um, towards the end of this had, had negative timing pressure, which means the student had ample time in this test. Now let's see how we can get the next two to three uh, points of improvement within quant. So to do that, I'm going to go into my Excel. Um, let's open my Excel here and we're going to um, uh, look at the raw data. So this is the raw data. I, I transposed all of this data in, in Excel and, and then we're going to analyze this, this particular data here. Now, the, there are a few things that, that would be truly apparent to you. This is the uh, a pivot table with, with algebra and arithmetic. And what you can see here is that this student made most of his mistakes in arithmetic, just one mistake in algebra. So his accuracy in, in, in algebra is 89%, his accuracy in arithmetic was 58%, yet his ability as estimated by the test was 78 percentile in algebra and 63rd percentile in arithmetic. Now, when you see something like this, where your accuracy is higher than, than your ability, then what it tells you is that in algebra, the test did not serve as many difficult questions to you. Uh, and, and the reason why the test did not serve any uh, as many difficult questions to you is because you made mistakes in arithmetic. So, so clearly, um, I would focus on arithmetic if I were, if I want to improve my, my scores, because that's what's limiting me now. Okay. Now, let's look at pure versus real context. And, and as we expected, the ability scores are very similar. The accuracies are very similar as well. You, you actually have three incorrect in both sections and there are, about, are three out of 10 and three out of 11. So very, very similar over here. Now, let's look at um, uh, 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 how, how, is it, how do we go back? How, how, do, how does our accuracy vary by content domain? And as we look at this, one thing which is very, very clear is value order factors is an issue. There the accuracy is lowest, also the ability estimate is lowest. Um, because of this, in counting set series and probability, um, which is this part over here, you can see the, um, that despite higher accuracy, the ability estimate is lower because the, the student wasn't served very many difficult questions for you um, in this case. Very similar to this um, in, in uh, inequalities in algebra, um, the student got six questions served, got, got two wrong, um, actually eight served and two wrong, and, uh, and, 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 and yet uh, was, 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 was able to only was only able to get a 67 percent again indicating that this value order factor these these three questions here may be hurting the student here 
as well as here. So I would truly focus on, on, on value order factors here. Um, there's something else that we can really look at in terms of uh, uh, where does a student take longer and this is your timing by real context and pure context and when you look at this there are questions where the student takes longer a lot of them are, are in real context here here you can see these ones um, this one here now there are some questions where in in pure context that the student where the student has taken longer for example this but that's uh, that's far and few, uh, whereas in, in terms of real context, that's where the student takes a lot longer. So, so what is our takeaway over here? Our focus needs to be on arithmetic and, and more specifically on, on within arithmetic on value order factors. Now, um, that's something which I think is, is absolutely critical. So if this student had a word to devote about two days uh, to, to improving his ability in quant, this is one area that I'd recommend that this uh, the student would devote to. And then I, I would recommend this student to devote about one day to just revising everything so that before the next mock, the student is warmed up. So, so, so they can repeat their performance in all the other areas while improving their performance in value order factors. And as they, as they do that, I can very easily see the student improve to an 82, uh, sorry, improve to an 84 or an 85. Now let's go back to our whiteboard and do the same analysis in verbal and to do that we're going to just zoom out a bit go to the top and and look at this again now on the verbal side of things the students got almost an 80th percentile or or an 82 so let's look at how we are doing in verbal so we have this raw data sheet and one of the big things that you can really see is there is just one question that's not answered here um, again we look at um, uh, the various uh, question types here. So the analysis and critique belong to CR, plan and construct belong to CR, uh, and, and everywhere else we see RC. And, and wherever um, the, the, the fundamental skills are RC based, you can see the, the percentile uh, ranking is 100%. Wherever they are CR based, you can see the percentile ranking is, 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 is lower. It's not 100% in this case. So clearly this person's done extremely well in RC. CR is where the problem is. Now remember, his overall percentile was 79. And this is something that you're going to find very, very interesting here. Um, his ability estimates for, uh, for CR and RC are 93rd and 100, much higher than the 79th percentile that this particular student has gotten in verbal. Now you may ask, why is this? Why is it that, how is it that this guy got a 93rd and 100 percentile as his ability estimates in CR and RC and a much lower overall ability estimate? For the very simple reason that um, when, you, when you leave a question unanswered, that's not taken into account when it comes to these ability estimates. I spoke to the folks at GMAC and they confirmed that, that these ability estimates are purely based on questions that you've answered. If you leave a question unanswered, that's not taken into account in your ability estimates. Also, these ability estimates are not as precise as, uh, as, as the overall sectional estimates. But again, the, that one question that this person did not answer in CR is, is probably what's hurting this score. Otherwise, in my opinion, this, this overall sectional ability estimate probably would have been a 90th percentile or even higher okay now let's look at the timing pressure chart over here and and you can really see this timing pressure chart is actually going in the positive domain and and and, and this starts to go in the positive domain over here towards the end and this is where the person did not answer this question now this this chart was always in the positive domain right at question number two at the end of question number two um, there was positive time pressure now this this did go down uh, uh, you know uh, towards the end, uh, towards the middle, but it, it came up again. And you can really see the core. I'll, when I show you the raw data, you'll be able to see the analysis with, with regards to time taken per question. But then towards the end, it's definitely positive timing pressure. The student was pressed for time. Now let's look at the raw data uh, in Excel for, for this particular student here. Again, here is the raw data in Excel. And, and one of the first things you're going to really see in this case is, is the excessive time taken on first and second question. Let me just zoom this in over here. So about nearly about three and a half minutes taken in, in the first question, about three minutes taken in the second question, another two and a half minutes taken in the, in the third question. So, so that's something which, which did create that positive time pressure. Later on, I'm going to show you how the student takes a lot longer in CR than in RC. But I want to focus on RC. So whenever you look at 
uh, raw data uh, in in the context of verbal there is one thing that you should look at what is is um, a time taken for the first rc and how does that vary with the second and third rc so there is the first rc here this particular student took 2 minutes 71 uh, 2171 minutes to read the first RC which is slightly towards the lower side and then after that this particular student answered the first and the second question but you know around about a minute which is actually very good you can see the same behavior repeat over here four and a half minutes to read the first question which is fine but then you can really see because that read was really good um, the person was able to answer the subsequent questions in practically no time this is where this person gained time because of that initial read um, again let's take another example here um, in this case but three and a half minutes to read the first question uh, uh, read the passage and answer the first question uh, which means this was a really good read why because the second and the third question were practically done in in no time so 0. 0.56 minutes is about 35 seconds and then this person got this right so that's something which is which is absolutely critical so this shows high quality reading and no wonder this person has a really high ability estimate in rc okay now let's look at our accuracy analysis here now in critical reasoning um, he got 13 questions and out of those 13 questions he got three wrong and there was one question that he did not he could not answer uh, his ability estimate mind you was was upwards of 90th percentile despite this which shows that these three questions were were extremely challenging here in, in RC, his accuracy was 100%, which is why his ability estimate was 100% as well. Now, with regards to the average time to answer per question, his average time to answer per question in, R, in CR was, was, was a lot higher, about 2 minutes and 14 seconds. In RC, it was 1.7 uh, uh, minutes. So, 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 again, clearly showing his good habits in RC saved him time. Um, uh, and and, and, and so, so, had this person answered this question uh, and marked this question correctly my guess is this particular student instead of getting an 82 would have gotten uh, an 84 or two points more and as a result would have gotten uh, a 250 uh, a 655 on on his overall test so so again this student lost these two points um, at least two points in in verbal just because they did not answer this question so one recommendation that i would really say is when you are on the last question always mark and and submit and and then if you are running short on time that is and then you can always go back and and you know uh, if you mark this question for review mark that question for review press submit and then you can go back and and always change your answer since it's the last question it's not going to change your your score and will ensure that you've submitted your uh, uh, your uh, uh, every question on the test okay so that's my analysis on, 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 on verbal. CR is clearly an area of improvement. Now, does this person need a lot of improvement in CR? Uh, not a whole lot. He, they are at a very high ability. So what I would recommend to them uh, is, is that make sure you finish the test and then revise your mistakes. Use, um, the, fill the behavior of the log and, and then look at it. There's no specific area in CR that I can see that this person needs to focus on because this person is already at a fairly high ability. That's where just analyzing uh, uh, why you made a mistake, filling out that behavior of the log is what would help. Again, this person, in my opinion, is already at an 84. Okay, with that, let's analyze DI and let's go to our, our whiteboard once again. And what we are going to do is we're going to again zoom out and and go to our overall score screen um, now 81 on di and 90th percentile so really high percentile on, on on di so let's go and look at our di attempt so as a di attempt one of the first things you can really see is is that there's no question that was left unattempted this is the entire di attempt you can see the person had ample time on the last question let me just zoom this in here ample time um, got this question wrong but but they had ample time so i don't expect this person to have timing issues in this case now let's confirm that with our timing chart here and as we look at this timing chart you can see negative timing pressure which means there were no timing issues that that's really good you can also see a lot of mistakes here but yet a 90th percentile now what an insights can we get from here again math versus non-math not a whole lot we can clearly see issues in data sufficiency 
we can see issues in graphs and tables those are our primary areas of improvement and this is and, and the nice thing about this is both of these are uh, are areas where which are very easily fixable um, if you if you do the right kind of uh, effort now let's analyze the raw data so so um, and and let's go into the analysis mode in excel so here is the analysis mode in excel and let me zoom this in here you can see the accuracy in, in data sufficiency is 57 percent the ability is 67 percentile what this indicates is the questions that this person got wrong were probably a bit harder same thing with graphs and table 50 percent accuracy 64th percentile ability in this case okay and and, and that's something which uh, uh, which tells me that uh, that that this particular student um, has has weaknesses in these areas and the strength in verbal uh, also shows up over here in msr which is you know which has more verb which tests more verbal skills than quant skills 100 percentile of accuracy 100 percentile ability 100 percent accuracy tpa 75 percent accuracy 87 percentile ability again a lot of tpa is 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 verbal so so clearly that strength in verbal is also highlighted in in di the relative weakness in quant that weakness in arithmetic in some ways is highlighted in data sufficiency and, 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 and graphs and tables. Then you can really see the interlinking between um, between the various sections here. So if this particular student were to improve um, to, uh, to, to, let's say, from, from a 645 to a 685 or a 695, where do they need to, to focus on? The first area is improve. Let's just make this slightly thicker. So, so the first area they need to look at is improve arithmetic. That's, I think, the biggest area of improvement. If they improve arithmetic, uh, my, 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 my guess is that they would uh, get plus two or plus three points in, in, in quant, where the, which will take their quant score to 85, and that would be a huge thing. The second thing would be to, uh, to focus on making sure that you, 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 you finish verbal. that would add plus two again. Just finishing verbal and repeating this performance would add plus two uh, in this case. And again, this is where you're not even focusing as much on ability improvement. If you improve your CR ability, I'm very certain this person can also add a plus four here. So this means they can go from an 82 to an 84 or even an 86. So I'm gonna put 85 as, as a median over here. And the third thing in DI is focus on data sufficiency. That is where their accuracy is the least. Um, and, and, and because the timing actually is perfect in these areas and, and that's my guess is that can get me plus one or plus two here so they can get to an 83. So when you look at 85 plus 85 plus 83 you can get to a 253 on, on and, and which will take you to a 695 if memory serves me right. So this is how you can go from a 645 to a, or a 645 to a 695 and, and and again you can do this in about 10 to 12 days as long as you repeat your performance in areas that you're doing well and you improve vulnerabilities in areas that that where you have clear gaps and, and this is how you you focus on on drawing insights from official mocks and building that improvement plan if you need help in building that write to me at rajat at e with that as we always say happy learning